Hi, my name is John Harding, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to sort and process a benthic invertebrate sample. So, in this YouTube, we're going to talk about uh, what's the purpose of taking these sort of samples and processing them, uh, what do you do if you've got want to do live processing, and talk a little bit about uh, sample size and how you might deal with large samples. So why are you doing this? And you might be taking samples because you're interested in biodiversity, species richness, or the stream health, you want to calculate some sort of health indice, or perhaps you want to have a look at community composition, abundance and biomass, or maybe you're actually looking for rare species or indicator species. So you're going and taking some sort of sample in the field, and uh, this might be a kickmet or some other sort of method. And in fact, if you're not sure about that, I do have another video you can have a look at, which is how to take uh, a, kick net a kick net sample. So when you do this, you're processing samples, you're going to need a bunch of gear, forceps and uh, those sort of things, which will make life a lot easier for you. So some people actually pick in the field, and so they take live samples. And you can see here that uh, you need a little bit of gear to do that if you're going to pick live in the field. And one of the real advantages of picking animals when they're live is, of course, they're moving. And so they're a lot easier to see and a lot easier to pick up. Um, however, some of these things, as you can see, they're pretty small and they're moving around pretty quickly. Uh, you might get things like ostracods, which appear on the surface, float on the surface, as shown here, but harder to find and see in the field. And uh, then you can end up with sort of some sort of live samples. Um, there are many protocols around the place uh, which can describe how you might go about this processing. Eventually, most people end up in the lab, and a lot of processing happens in the laboratory. And when you start doing that, of course, you need some trays. Uh, you can have an expensive tray on the left or an ice cream container on the right there, for example. And you're probably going to need to sieve your sample, especially if it's full of lots of mud and silt and that sort of thing. And you can see here I've got a 500 micron or half a millimeter sieve. This is what we use to sieve uh, macro benthic invertebrates in particular. And so you're going to end up bringing your sample back into the laboratory. Uh, it's probably in preservative, so you're going to want to wash that out and wash that out nice and thoroughly uh, into your 500 micron sieve here. And you might have, as I just said before, quite a lot of material in the sample. So often it's worth spending quite a bit of time actually washing the sample, getting rid of really fine uh, material. And uh, so you've basically got something that's a bit more cleaner when it comes to you actually picking and sorting the animals. So spent, time spent washing is actually really time well spent in this sort of thing. So you can see here I basically washed it into a tray. Now some samples will be messy, they'll be large. Um, you might think, well I can't deal with all of this at once. So there's a number of different methods you can use to help you. Uh, one of them I'm showing here is I've just split the sample, so I'm actually washing about half of it into one tray, and then I'm going to wash the rest into a second tray. So I'll, I'll basically split it in two. And this is really good when you've got a lot of animals or a lot of fine material. Do make sure you, you clean your sieve very uh, thoroughly. Uh, there are other methods you can use to help you pick, and one of them is to actually stain uh, your samples. And in this case, I've used Rose Bengal, which is a stain, and you can see here that it's a sort of a pinky red stain, and uh, it dissolves in the water and then is taken up um, across the uh, invertebrate and animal membrane. You probably need to leave it in this Rose Bengal for a while for the stain to take. Here's some examples uh, of what the animals look like after they've been stained. So you can see that a lot of the animals have got this sort of pinky red. The idea behind staining is to make it easier to see animals, and some you can see stain really well. Other methods that you can use are things like sugar solution here, or calcium chloride, 
Both of these techniques are designed to be able to float animals. One of the methods that I actually quite like is simply just elutriating them. In other words, pouring off some of the, the top of the solution and you'll find that, again, sort of mayflies and stoneflies and these sort of things float to one side and then on the other side you end up with uh, heavier animals. You can also split your sample into subsamples. So in this example here, we've marked the tray into, into grids. And what we're going to do is count and identify animals uh, which are in a certain number of grids. We might do you know, five grids out of 20 to get an idea of the subsample. And that's when you've got a really big sample. OK, so we now have our sample ready to sort. And uh, there's a number of different ways you can go around sorting samples. You can pick biggest animals first. You can start in a corner. Or you can do uh, fixed count methods. When you're sorting, you, you might want to put your animals in trays um, to fit the types of species that you think you've got here. And this is a Bogorov tray, which we use often under a microscope. The reality is you end up often having to look at your samples under a microscope to certainly to identify them and maybe even to, to do your counting. The reality is some of these animals actually might be so small that you do really need to look at them under the microscope to see them. And then here I've picked out all the snails, which I'm now going to put aside to, to identify. And when you've done that, you're going to store your samples. And even if you've finished identifying, you're probably going to want to store your samples for later use. I hope you've found this uh, video useful. And if you've enjoyed it, feel free to like it and stay tuned for further videos in this series.